Hey guys, how are you? I am filming from my kitchen today because I am going to attempt a recipe for a French almond cake. If you would like to see a very formal and amazing turnout for this recipe, check out French Guy Cooking here on YouTube. He is absolutely the inspiration for me to make this. Uh, so what you will need for this recipe is a third cup of softened butter. Just put it on a plate, let it hang out, get to room temperature for a while, it will be perfect. You need two sheets of puff pastry, you need a pinch of baking powder, you need a few drops of almond extract, some parchment paper for baking, some salt, just a pinch. You're also going to need some almond flour or almond meal, which is just kind of ground up almonds. You're going to need two eggs divided. You're going to need a third of a cup of sugar, yes, a third of a cup of sugar something to brush the egg wash on with and that is about it so i'm going to use the KitchenAid mixer to get everything combined and i'm going to cut the puff pastry into circles so it actually resembles a cake and i will show you what this starts okay, first things like. first i've broken both my eggs one in each bowl and i'm just whipping this up with a fork no big deal you don't have to get a whisk out or anything you just kind of have to separate this Make sure that it's all kind of whisked together. Okay, everything is in the mixer. We have a third cup granulated sugar. We have a cup of the almond powder. We have one of the eggs that was beaten first. We have a third cup of the softened butter. We have a tiny pinch of salt, a pinch of baking powder, and a few drops of almond extract. I went a little heavy on the almond extract because I really, really love the flavor. I love the scent and already the kitchen is smelling amazing. Okay, so at this point, I've been mixing this a little bit and there's just like a rogue piece of butter who's not really being incorporated very well. So, I just want to scrape off the edges again, and I'm going to give this probably a few more seconds, just a final mix, and let it go at that. This filling is, it just smells so good. Okay, so I needed to kind of scrape the sides again going to turn this on, let it mix up just a little bit more, and at this point in the video, you might be thinking that baking is not really my thing, or maybe you're even thinking cooking is not really my thing, and I do like to cook. I'm not really somebody who bakes or does a lot of recipes like for sweet stuff or anything, so it's pretty rare that I'll get out the mixer just to do something like a dessert. But that being said, and I'm letting this go a little bit more because I can still see pieces of butter. That being said, Lent is coming. Um, I do practice Lent every year and that is starting for Catholics on this coming Wednesday. So I always give up desserts. I don't give up sugar entirely, but I do give up desserts. And I always give up something else as well. And I thought this is like the perfect thing to kind of, you know, have one last time before Lent begins. So right now you can see that this filling is looking pretty amazing. I'm gonna scrape off this I'm going to get all the filling together and I'm going to spread out the first sheet of puff pastry and let you see what that looks okay, like. Okay, as you can see, I have the first sheet of puff pastry spread out on the parchment paper. I added just a little bit of butter to the parchment paper and it's sitting on the warm stove. So um, it was really easy to kind of just spread that around a little bit. It's an unnecessary step, but it's just going to ensure that the bottom of your cake doesn't stick to this because you're going to bake the cake right on this paper. So what I did was make some circular cuts along the edges just to make this a more circular formation. And once I remove those excess pieces, I'm going to add the filling to the Okay, what I'm going to do now is add the filling to the center of this and... I'm going to spread this out evenly once everything is on the dough. Okay, so all the filling has been added at this point, and there was a lot of filling. Like, I didn't think it was going to make that much. I was pretty surprised. But what you want to do is you want to leave a border 
with nothing on it around the edges because you're going to um, apply some of that beaten egg there and that's going to act as a binder or some glue for the top sheet of your puff pastry to go on and create the cake effect. So I've beaten an egg and I'm using this pastry brush just to go all along the edges and make sure that it's all covered. There's like a little bit of flour from the puff pastry itself that kind of keeps it from sticking together. So if you see like excess flour when you buy yours, um, that's the reason. So you're just gonna go all the way around the edge, make sure that you get this everywhere because you want this to be nicely sealed. So now I'm going to apply the second piece of pastry to the top of this. All right, I'm not sure how well the camera is gonna pick this up, but what I did was I kind of, well, I attempted to kind of give this little kind of crease edge to the cake, and then I made these crisscross little slits around the entire thing, and then where they intersected, I pushed the knife all the way through just to let some steam escape. So I'm gonna add some egg to the top of this, and then my own little touch, I'm gonna add some raw sugar. Okay, so I put two coatings of the egg on the top, which is really key because it's gonna give you a very golden brown effect when you uh, finish baking this. And I also added one entire teaspoon of sugar in the raw, which is just, it almost has the appearance of brown sugar, but it's a granulated sugar. And um, the brand is called Sugar in the Raw. So I added one teaspoon of that across the top. And I'm totally fine with that getting a little bit burned up and caramelized because I think it's just going to add to the effect. So I'm going to pop this in a 400 degree preheated oven. I'm going to put it in there for 30 minutes. Keep an eye on it and I will show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, this is ready to come out of the oven and it looks unbelievably delicious. So I'm going to take this out and I will cut it. For okay, this is out of the oven. Like I told you, I baked this directly on the parchment paper and I just put this right on a cutting board because I'm going to cut this and show you what it looks like on the inside. But for some of you that have been to Paris, you know that there's a bakery there and it's a chain bakery. It's called Paul's Bakery. And if you've never been there, uh, just do a Google image search and you will see that stuff in their window looks just like this. And this could not have been more simple to make. And 30 minutes in the oven is perfect. I think it has a little bit of a brown spot back here, which doesn't bother me at all, but it's probably just like the uneven heat in my oven. But I'm gonna cut this and show you what it looks like on the inside because I'm sure it looks as good on the inside as it does outside. All right, I'm ready to cut into this. And as you can hear, the crust is just crazy. It's perfect. So it has like this crispy outside and the steam is coming out. Like if I push this, there's still steam coming out and it's just really flaky. So I'm just gonna cut into that. And I probably should have waited a little bit, but I couldn't because I was just too impatient. And I just couldn't wait to show you. I'm going to see myself. So. Okay, and there you have it. There's all that delicious ridiculously decadent almond filling on the inside. And if you have smell-o-vision right now, Oh my gosh, this is, it. the scent is just filling up the entire kitchen. It is just unbelievable. So I definitely recommend going heavy on the almond extract if you decide to make this. That's what I did and it's probably going to taste as good as it looks. So I'm gonna let this cool just a little bit more because the inside of this is just steaming hot and I'm going to have this with a cup of hot tea and I think it's going to be the perfect way to spend my last Sunday before Lent. And after this, it's pretty much dessert over for me for the next 40 days until Easter. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, please check out French Guy Cooking, his channel. He is just uh, an unbelievable chef and really entertaining. 
and I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you next time. Take care. All right, I can't help it. I just have to do it. Oh my God, that is so freaking good.